Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to CFL Central, CFL content for the fans, by the fans. We have our week three review, and the hat that I don't want to wear, and then the two hats that Rick seems to be so thrilled to be wearing. Oh, 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 there it is. That's there how is. tired I am there's, on this high cat team th- that th- I just there, threw the hat. And I throw su- this one, too. There's the suburban dad shit. look. There's the suburban <laughs> dad look. All right, we're, we're going to waste no time. We're going to get right into this. We're going to talk about... The BC Lions game, because it sure as shit won't was not the bomber game. <laughs> Guys, what what happened? Our offensive line couldn't stop shit. They couldn't <laughs> stop shit. And like, I'm not gonna lie. If I, I'm I, I'm not someone who typically likes to single out guys, but there there's one of our guards just seemingly couldn't couldn't stop anyone. Patrick Newfelt. I don't I don't I don't know what's going on, man. I don't I don't know. I don't know this like guys, guys. Zach Caleros got sacked seven times. Seven <laughs> seven That is unacceptable. That is brutal. That is brutal, 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 brutal. brutal. Our corners weren't the best. We we struggled to stop. Like, because th- this is the thing. I said this uh, la- last week or whatever. Guys, we cannot, we can't <clears throat> keep expecting to win if we're giving up 30 points a game. We gave up 30 points and we lost. We didn't even get ourselves a touchdown. The offense was rough. Zach Caleros, like, I mean, he was getting killed all game. So, I mean, we didn't have an easy thing to work with. Although, to be fair, I expect a bit more from Caleros because Caleros, you are known to be the best scrambling quarterback in the CFL who deals with pressure better than anybody else. Um, I don't think I I don't think I saw him connect on a single pass where he was scrambling. He just he was just he was getting he was getting ran over. He just didn't have anything to work with, but he didn't do anything with what he did have. Um, Sergio Castillo had a good night. Went two for two, but, uh, (laughs) I mean, that's all we got. That was it. There's just laziness, lack of effort. It was just, I wasn't pleased. Um, the Lions ran us over. The Lions played to the absolute best of their capabilities, and we played to the absolute drizzling shit. There's nothing else to say about this game. Now, a lot of people are like, are like, Carter, are you are you worried about the bombers now? The answer no, because I am so I would so much rather this happen now than happen in the playoffs. Get that no, you know cuz this the bombers need a wake up call. You're not invincible. Honestly, I I'm okay with the fact that we have this loss as long as we fucking learn from it and move forward. However, we're going to we're, we're so Lions would win 30 to 6, but right now we're going to move on to a team that keeps losing and keeps not learning from their mistakes. And what team is that, Rick? Um yeah. What what team is that? Um we won't go there. The I Hamilton mean, Tiger me, Cats. I mean, if you want to be technical, we could say we could throw Edmonton Elks and Ottawa Red Blacks into oh, that. Oh, there we go. Mix yeah, too, just drag I mean, them all into the state. If you're going down, we might as well bring everyone Edmonton down with us. Edmonton was hanging out there waiting for a friend. <laughs> Shut up. And Ottawa was so, like, was like, they're like in there, like praying that like Jeremiah Mazzoli comes and saves them, like. The only, the only, as the saying goes, when it rains, and I gotta watch how I say this because of DMC and whatnot, but it beeping pours, and it literally poured on Sunday or Friday in the rain. It wasn't just that we played horrible; it poured. Oh my goodness! And even when Schultz went to go run for that touchdown, this guy slid. And fell face first on the turf because of how wet the ground was. I mean, numbers wise, he threw, I mean, 345 yards. So, I mean, that's not too bad. The highest I've ever seen him throw. 
Yeah. Mind he didn't throw any touchdowns. So, I mean, that's what happens when you only focus on two wide receivers. Yep. And I think you remember me saying this last year. The exact same thing happened with us last year. You shut down Dunbar and White last year. We're toast. This year, it's White and Duke Williams. You shut us those two people down. You ain't getting nowhere. Yep. You overthrow them. You ain't going nowhere. You underthrow them. You ain't going nowhere. Our defense couldn't even stop a freaking snail. That's how horrible. Like, Simone Lawrence, I don't even know where the heck he is. He should just, like, call it quits because he hasn't done jack. Just invisible. Like, our offensive line right now, because, like, uh, four out of ten of our injured players on the sixth game are our offensive line. Like, we're playing two rookies have, that have never played in the CFL before. Oh, boy. So, I think once we get our offensive line back, we'll actually have some type of protection. But, I mean, like, I mean, Tim White had 143 yards, but no touchdowns. Yeah. Like, to me, it's it's just, like, defense. Oh, don't even get me started on the whole Chris Edwards thing. I don't know if you saw it or not. No, I did not. So, enlighten me. So... This is, like, I can see why Argo fans didn't want Chris Edwards on their team anymore. Mac from, I think it was Mac, from the Al, the, the Alouettes went to go shake his hands after the game. And he does, like, a full two-hand, shoves the guy. Oh, the my Mac God. The Mac does, like a, like, a back, like, somersault over the back. And to, the, to today, I, we still haven't seen if he's getting suspended if he's getting fined. That's pathetic. That's pathetic. Like, fans don't even want him back on the team. Yeah, I wonder why. Like, that's such poor sportsmanship. Like, seriously. That, no, that's, the, and you know, it's funny. The, 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 se- the second I hear, uh, the second I heard that, you know, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking, Brandon Banks, Brandon Banks. Oh, like, don't even get me, don't even get me started with the whole Brandon Banks thing. Cause he's trying to hint to people. That he doesn't want to retire because he wants one more run with the Thai Cats, and if you if you listen to his interview at, at three hundred and fifty thousand uh, a year or whatever the hell it is, no, like he was saying on Thai Cats now or something on the Thai Cats audio network, he's like, he's trying to hint, he's like, I don't want to call it quits, like I'm happy where my career is, but if there's one team out there that wants to sign me, the team has to be right, and he's like. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, like trying to say tie cats. But he's like, well, the people that can only make that happen are Bob Young and Orlando Steinhauer. It's like, but like, you're 35. You only got like 500 and some odd yards last year. Like, just call it quits. Jeez. But I mean, we're on our bye week this week. Honestly, play, that, that, I, that is a much needed bye week for you guys, I will say. You, you guys need some time to reset, figure I mean, it out. Bo Levi Mitchell's on the six-game injured list, so that'll be interesting. Although, I mean, I'm, I I'm hoping. I'm not trying to promote anything here. If I wake up tomorrow, Wednesday or Thursday, with an alert on my phone that says Tommy Condal has been fired, I'm going to the lottery board and I'm going to buy myself a lottery ticket. There you go. It's your lucky day. It's your lucky day. So we're going to move on to our next game of the week, uh, and this will be our first game of the season to actually finish in overtime, and this would be the Saskatchewan Rough Riders versus the Calgary Stampeders. So the Rough Riders, you know, they, they, they win their first game of the season in a tight game that shouldn't have been a tight game, but they expose some brutal flaws in the Elks. They go on their next game. They play the Bombers. They lose by a decent amount, but they put up a really good showing for what they had here. And the Stamps have been kind of in this weird state of limbo uh, through the season. So it was going to be an interesting matchup. And the Riders would come out victorious in very close fashion, winning 29-26. to 26. And <clears throat> and it would be very interesting as well as we would see um, in the second half of this game, we would see... Malik Henry? 30, we'd see in the second half of this game, excluding overtime, excluding overtime, We'd see 37 points put up on the board. So 
Uh, those are those are always, I guess, the more down to the wire, a bit more fun football games is the, are those games where you'll get that high scoring in the second half. Um, the Bombers' problem this week is they had high scoring nowhere on the board. Um, uh, sorry, I have to take my time to, sh- to shit on my favorite. I love this team, which is why I shit on them. <laughs> um, Brady Oliveira, you had a great game. You're one of the only guys who had a great game uh, because you you always have a great game. He, he plays well all the time. But, I mean, so there, I, I'm not sure exactly how much to say about this game in the sense of I, I, th- I sadly didn't have a chance to keep up with this game as much as other games this week. But, I mean, they both put up a field goal in the first quarter. Uh, Calgary would in the second quarter. So it would be 6-3 going into the half. Um, the um, And then the Stamps would follow that up with a touchdown. However, Saskatchewan gets two in that third quarter. So third quarter, that means the score would be, let's see, 17-13 to 13 in favor of the Riders. Um, riders would get themselves six points in the fourth. I don't know if that's them missing. No, that's two field. Uh, that is a uh, – okay, so it looks like they actually they went for a, t- a touchdown, and then it says uh, Sean Patterson one-yard run failed. So I'm going to assume that they actually went for two on that touchdown, it looks like, but they, they failed on that. And then it looks like they had um, – there was a touchdown there for the uh, for the Stamps, and it looks like then Rene Perretta has got a 53-yard field goal here. So good kick by Rene Perretta. Again, this is why I was saying Rene Perretta just needed a second to get into form, and it seems like Rene Perretta has fully come into form here as he has been excellent as in the second quarter – he hits this game. He hits a forty-seven, a forty-six, a and a fifty-three-yard field goal, and then he hits a twenty-three-yard field goal in overtime. But with the exception of overtime, every one of those field goals that's actually relatively impressive for CFL standards. That is very good, um, as we have we have <laughs> time and time again seen guys miss convert kicks, thirty-yard field goals. It happens in the CFL. It's something that you don't it's like, oh, yeah, you get that gimme point after the touchdown. How much of it is a gimme point, guys? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, like, like, what do you what do you think about this game? I'm curious. Um, so Just relatively there's, only quick, two, there's only two things that I got to mention. If things aren't going bad for Calgary, they are now. Malik Henry is now gone for the rest of the season. And so they have pretty much all rookies. If not, like, one or two one-year players. Yep. Then on the Saskatchewan side, here's a thing that drives me nuts the most. Mm-hmm. Jake Whittakey. I have not seen him get one game. Possibly, I'd have to go through the numbers. Yep. One game over 50 yards. That's not... Like, that's not what, what are they paying him 200000 if not more, for? Are like, you're just pissing... Geez. Oh yeah, they're just pissing away money. Yeah, this is like um... I don't like I don't even know like. Okay, Emulus. Okay, yeah, you have him. You have Bain Junior. And then you and have... Emulus had a uh, like Emil uh, or I think it was Emulus. I can't remember exactly how you say his name, but whatever. But point is, he had a great game against the Bombers here, and so that was a really strong performance he had. So looks like they're looking to hopefully continue with that. He plays decent. Like, I don't even, like, even even with the next game that we're going to discuss, like, all of, like, the big high signs wide receivers are doing nothing this year. Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, over, overall, overall, solid game. Um, nice to see, uh, nice to see, I guess, uh, a game go to overtime. Bit exciting, but let's get into our last game of the week. And I'm going to let you start on this one. But we got the Toronto Argonauts getting winning 43 to 31. The Elks do get 31 points against the Argonauts. So if there's anything up for the Elks, it's it is the fact that they were able to get 31 points in this game. So how how are we feeling about the Elks? Cuz I mean they didn't win at home, but you know. Okay, so when I when I first seen Edmonton score that first touchdown, I'm like, "Oh my god, the football gods are on our side. So they're actually going to win a game." Yep. Not even close. Nope. <laughs> and finally, Cornelius has been benched for the fur for for the future 
foreseeable future. Yeah, no, and and that's and not that's the starter anymore. And that's the right call. Although I have to say, when I went on when I went on three down nation today, and I saw a thing that Chris Jones is like, I would have bet my house that we would have won a game by now, and I'm like. Nobody bring this guy to the casino. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, like really? Really? Not, you would have bet your a, house? Like, that's a Chris that. Jones moment if I ever saw it. But, like, although I will say some of these some of these touchdowns that Edmonton gets, like, I, don't, I can't remember which quarterback was in at this point. It wasn't Cornelius. He swings out to the side, scrambling, throws the ball, gets hammered, looks like it's going to be a pick, goes off the hands of the Argos player, right into Edmonton and they just run it down. And I'm like, that has to be the luckiest touchdown because that is a hundred percent a pick that they just fucked up. And I don't know if you've seen it, but they also let go of Loxley as well today. Yep. So now you have, I saw Cornelius an hour ago. So now Cornelius is, I don't know if you'd put him second or third string Ford's now dressed. And now you have Garrett Doxley. Doogie, I can't remember how you say his name. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. I mean, for someone that that was like your third, yep, quarterback coming in, Loxley only had like one shot. And then here's the thing: TSN's throwing all over the fact it's like, um, it's like drama central, like the Argos were last year. When yeah. Banks was pushing everyone around, so, now it's well, like drama central of Edmonton. But yeah, well, that's that's but, well, it's because the, it's because they need that win. The Edmonton Elks now extend their losing streak at home to zero and nineteen. Not a good look. They're looking for the big old two zero soon enough. Um, overall, though, I have to say Edmonton being able to put up they put up a touchdown in the first quarter, put up ten points in the second, and then fourteen points in the third quarter. Nothing in the third third quarter they they gave up they gave up 18 didn't get anything for themselves so one of those things where i think if you're the edmonton elks you're looking to have a bit more of a consistent game is if you solve that third quarter you might win this game and so that's the thing it's like did they get some lucky bounces yes but they made the most out of those lucky bounces i will say and that's gonna happen in your football games and that's the thing if the elks are gonna get a win at home they're gonna need a bit of luck they're gonna need consistent play and you know, it is what it is. They're going to need to get that figured out. So 43-31 victory for the Toronto Argonauts. So <clears throat> overall, I'd say a good week of football. Uh, we will have a video soon enough, probably a day after this one releases, uh, about our preview of this upcoming week. Only three games this upcoming week, but uh, got a few exciting ones. Uh, actually, there's one that I'm actually really excited for and then one that's just the stink bowl. But um, and then one that's just a little bit confusing. Uh, but yeah, so we'll get into that in that video. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. Make sure you guys um, uh, like. I already said like, share, and subscribe. Um, make sure you guys and comment below. Comment below. That's what it is. Oh my god, I forgot my own script. This is ridiculous. I don't have a script. It's just something I say. And I don't forget it, but this time I did forget it. So comment down below what you thought of this week of football. And we will see you guys next time. Touchdown!